help me with this question. Mm. Why do we keep gravitating towards this thing, this thing called marriage? Right. We are a pair bonded species. Okay. We're pair bonded species. We're like wood storks. You know, and and it's it, we wouldn't necessarily have to be a pair bonded species. Tell me we what pair bond is. Pair bonded for, means for, that right for me and crayon that that a, a a couple gets together and they they want to be faithful to each other naturally. Okay. They naturally want to be one to one, and they want it to last. And they their dream is for that's the person you're looking at as you're taking your dying breath. That's how humans are wired. Okay. Now, not every culture has done that. Sure. Not every society has been successful in that. Right. But that's the natural proclivity of Homo sapiens. Okay. I think that's the. I mean, there's all this stuff about polyamory and stuff. That's all nonsense. Right, I mean, right. there are certain people who are different than the norm. Sure. There are certain people who have different psychology and. Sure maybe even different biology when it comes to that. But the vast majority of people are one-to-one pair bonded and they want it to actually last. That is wired into us as a species. Mm -hmm. That is also, I believe, metaphysically a, a matter of natural law. Mm -hmm. And so even, by the way, and an offshoot of this is that 97% of people, including young people who are the most emancipated, progressive people morally you can imagine, 97% right. say that adultery is morally wrong all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, that's way higher than the number of people who say that prostitution is wrong. Right, right. So people believe that, you know, people want to be one-to-one -one and they believe that cheating's wrong right. is the bottom line. Uh -huh. And they believe those things so strongly that they want to memorialize that union. That's yeah. called marriage. Yeah. Now, there's one step that goes further that I think that people have a natural sense of the metaphysical because, again, the prefrontal cortex, the, 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 the wiring of the brain is very interesting. If you interviewed Lisa Miller at mm -hmm. Columbia, so she's the best psychologist, neuroscientist, neuropsychologist on faith experiences. Okay. She talks about what actually happens in the brain with faith experiences. Okay. We have a sense of the divine. We just do. There are no, according to anthropologists, there are no organized civilizations that we've ever had any evidence of in human history that didn't worship. Right. We didn't all worship the same thing the same in the same way, right. but we're made to worship. And one of the things that people feel about their marriage, they want it to be magic. Now, Love is a right hemisphere thing where all the ineffable mystical things happen in our brains. And one of the things that we feel is that that pair bond, that union is, is an antenna to the divine. Mm. And that's what you and I believe as Christian men, by the way, right. because we believe that, that, that the, the reason that divorce is unnatural is because you're pulling apart, you're, you're, you're tearing apart the ability. Your completion with your wife is the way that she understands God's love and you understand God's love. God's love for you is transmitted vis-a-vis -vis your wife. Correct. That's how people feel about it. Even if they don't have the theology behind it, that's, the, that's, Genesis, that's Genesis 2. Yeah. You know, that's the, the, the Yahwistic understanding of God yeah. is that man is made to be with woman mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And they're one flesh and it's his rib, yeah. you know, and that, that's, that's real stuff. It's yeah, actually yeah. kind of, and that's a, that's a visceral metaphor for yeah. actually how we see it. And we only understand God when we have this holy vocation. Okay. And most people, yeah, yeah, sure, that, sure, that's sure. how we feel. So the point is that we're, for whatever reason, if you're religious, you're not religious, people are wired to feel that. Mm -hmm. And they want to make that as official as they possibly can, whether they're religious wow. or not. Okay. Yeah. And that's just, the natural state of being for homo sapiens, for the vast majority of homo sapiens. And there's anomalous stuff. I mean, we, in my, well, in my church, we have priests that are celibate. Of course, and, yeah. and there's some people who believe that they but, can but be- But that idea is I'm going to sacrifice this thing. It's a sacrifice. Right. That's yeah, yeah, a sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And then there, and then there's some people who believe you can be in love with, you know, you know, 15 people in a bicycle at the same, I don't know, whatever, sure, sure, right? Sure, sure. But yeah. that's not the norm. Yeah. That's just not the way people are wired. This is natural. This is natural law. This is how people are meant to be, most people. That's a much more complex yet a much simpler answer than I was thinking. Yeah. There's just a gravitational pull towards this thing. This is human anthropology. Yeah. This is basic human anthropology is that we're not, we're not supposed to be alone. We're not supposed to, we're not lone wolves. We're wired to complete each other and we're wired for love. And if you're going to pull apart a culture, a society, it would be to question that very yeah. That's architecture. That's what you go after. That's that what you go after. That very architecture. If you, if you want to reorder everything, you start with, you start with couples. Yeah, pull them apart. You pull them apart. You, you attack 
romantic love. Mm -hmm. You attack marital love. That's how you do it. Okay, but there's also the other side of that. So, um, gosh, and, I, and I've lost the author's name, but I was recently reading um, basically an anthropo anthropological account of marriage. And I think that the title of the chapter was When Love Ruined Marriage. Mm -hmm. And it was the sense That's of- That's Eli Finkel, right? It, possibly, that, may be, that may be Eli. Yeah. That, that probably is Eli. Yeah. It was a, but it was a, f what my takeaway was this, there are things you have to do to fuel this thing yeah. and to keep this thing going, yeah. right? And if you just rely on how this thing yeah. feels, especially in a world that we've dropped humans into that we're not designed to live in, right. um, this world of overstimulation, overabundance, there is some right, uh, left brain things you've got to do. I've totally. got to, I've got to attune to this thing and pay attention to it through yeah, action. Right, totally, it's not all romance. And so Eli Finkel wrote the All or Nothing Marriage. That's it, yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, his stuff is great. His yeah. stuff is is really, really interesting and really good. And and here's the interesting thing about how marriage is supposed to work fundamentally. Mm -hmm. There is an ignition process for falling in love, mm -hmm. right? And it starts with sex hormones. Right. That's why people want to be attractive to each other, like, sure. like sexually dimorphically attractive to each other, right. like red lips and, uh, and and not not you, and biceps. And right. why? Why? I mean, it's completely anachronistic. The reason <laughs> is because that is has a, a biologic that elicits a biological response in the potential mate. Mm -hmm. That then quickly goes into the. Uh, uh, neurochemistry, a, a, a stimulation of catecholamines mm -hmm. in the brain, most notably norepinephrine and dopamine for euphoria and anticipation of reward. Mm -hmm. And that's when, you know, I can't, I guess, I think her text, I think I just got a text from her. It's like, it's a text, right, right. but that anticipation of reward has to do with dopamine and norepinephrine. I skipped the final once because I thought the woman who's, who is now my wife was going to be walking across campus at a certain time. And I thought, I bet I can get to that final 30 minutes late. I'm going to yeah. go. I yeah, yeah. That's, it. That's it. That's, That's it. it. Because you were basically the norepinephrine in your brain was giving you a sense of euphoria at the thought from the dopamine of the antici anticipated reward. <laughs> right. And that's step two. Yeah. Step three is a big drop in serotonin. And this happens a few weeks into a relationship typically. And that the reason for that is because it, and it looks like depression, by the way, because depression is associated with, with you know, ruminative sadness is associated <laughs> with low serotonin levels because you need to ruminate on the other person. This is how you bond. And that's what it's like. That's when you send a hundred text messages like a moron. And like guys who are 70 years old will, will exhibit this adolescent behavior because their serotonin levels are in the tank. Their ventral lateral prefrontal cortex is highly <laughs> stimulated because you're ruminating the other person. And you, what you want to- I've even, never done this. Me neither, never. Never, never. never, never. <laughs> and, and, then, and then the last step is true bonding to the other person. And that's associated with vasopressin and oxytocin, right? That's when it's like, you're my kin. I'll defend you. You're my only person. Yeah. That's and that's where you want to get. And that's where that's this bonding. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, relationships that are successful, they start with all this incredible passion, this heat, mm -hmm. this heat. But but by the end of a couple of years, or certainly five, where you want to get is from passionate love to what we call companionate love. Yeah. Companionate love is best friendship. Yep. Not only friendship but it's best friendship that has tons of oxytocin. And by the way, there's still sex and there's still passion. They're still fighting. But, f oh yeah, well that's, for, I mean, like marry a Spaniard, man. It's also you fighting. <laughs> it's like 10,000 <laughs> fights later, still love each other. That's right, and, right. Uh, it, but, but that's really important to keep in mind because if you don't have that, if you don't do the work mm -hmm. to actually get to companionate love, you'll break up and hate each other. Why? Because you were never even friends. Uh, you were never yeah, even yeah. friends. And so you, you were realize you love each other, but you don't like each other. And so the goal is, mm -hmm. is to have loving plus liking and liking really comes later because mm -hmm. that's your friend. That's your mate. That's your, that's your. What your, about the reverse when somebody says we were friends for a long friend time? Zone, and, and friend zone, friend zone to love zone. But then we become, I guess. It, yeah. It's very rare. Yeah. It's very rare in the literature. It's uh -huh. very rare. And usually what happens is that one is in love and the other isn't. It's an asymmetric thing. And typically a, a man is in love with a woman and the woman's not in love with the man, <laughs> but she likes the guy because he's awesome and he yeah. brings her a latte. And he's sturdy and stable and over and, time. And he yeah. listens to her troubles about all her, you know, the jerks yeah. that she's dating. And and you know what that is is an asymmetric love relationship, and he's pining away, hoping to get out of the friend zone. Right. Sorry, it's very difficult <laughs> to get out of the friend zone. And part of the reason is because you're not going to run the neurochemical cascade in reverse. Right. It doesn't work that way. You're not going to suddenly, you know, like oh, wow, I went to step one after yeah. knowing each other for four years. Well, very that, unusual. 
that right there is the biochemical reason I think dating apps ultimately fall themselves because yeah. you never get those moments. Well, you're not yeah. courting is not intended to, right. to work that way. That's you know, right. you're not supposed to adjudicate your or or to to you know, curate your relationships yeah. for on the basis of if they like Trump, right, and they think you know, NBA basketball is okay and they like Sriracha and want to move to Austin. I mean, that's, these are not, these are, <laughs> you know, they're not, cri not the criteria for actual. The other thing is, by the way, that on the dating apps, it's so shallow and superficial what you get about a, a person that 10% of the guys get all the action. Right, exactly. Because the guys that, I mean, m women find 80% of men disgusting. Mm -hmm. Men find 20% of women unattractive. Right. And so that asymmetry per se means that 10% of guys get turned into dark triad narcissists mm -hmm. because they get all the action. They got a roster of women yeah, that they're, they're getting and the other 90% are going dry mm -hmm. because they can't have, there's no questions. There's no personality. There's no depth. There's yeah. no reason to fall in love with a guy if he doesn't pass the looks good on the dating you profile. you this tall? Do you make this much money? And exactly I'm, I'm right. Off. This yeah, is yeah. why, this is how it's messing up dating and courting yeah. in so many fundamental ways. That's why, by the way, that relationships that start on the apps, some of them are great. Yeah. But on average, when marriages occur pursuant to meeting on an app, they tend to be less stable and they feature less attraction. Hmm. Because they're less likely to actually go through the cascade in the right direction and go to passionate, companionate, best friendship. Huh. It's a problem. Dang, it's a problem. It's a when you problem. mediate any relationships electronically, you're going to have trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are because we're made to be in person. That's, That's why, you know, you and I could do this electronic or we could do this uh, virtually. It wouldn't nah, be as good because nah, we're nah. getting oxytocin right now through the eye contact right. and the touch. Right, right, right. That's right. how you get eye contact and touch, how you get how you get true human human connection right. with your friends and, and especially with your family.